1817, the Morgan House was built for William Porter and his family. It remained a house to his family until about 1853, when the Hicks Hotel, which was located directly across the street, now is presently the town hall, had burned down. That hotel was a stagecoach stop. In about 1853 to 1855, Edwin Morgan turned the Morgan House into a stagecoach stop. Throughout the years, it's been owned by many families, the longest being the Shields family, which owned it for almost 40 years. Maria Cole owned it for approximately 8 to 10 years in the 1970s. Many um, friends of, of Nat King Cole's, which were musicians, visited uh, the Morgan House, and I heard at that period in time there was, there was a lot of famous people seeing the uh, Morgan House. railroad station was built in 1893 and ran as a passenger service for the New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad until 1972. At that time only the parcel post office was open here for Railroad Express and then eventually the building closed down completely. Uh, we purchased the building in 1976 because it had collapsed at one end of the building, the roof was totally down, and the town of Lee was going to tear the building down. My two sons and Dan gave up a year and a half of their life to restore this building. It's been fun, it's been a lot of work, but um, we've kept a lot of people employed over the years. Sort of was a process. It started with uh, the realization that the school was going to be 
destroyed. The parish had tried for a number of years to find good uses for the building, and when it became apparent that the school was becoming a burden and its days were numbered, and that it was going to be demolished, uh, I started to think long and hard as to what, what I could do to try to preserve the building. And uh, I owned this piece of land at the corner of Maine and Elm, and realized that uh, it was conceivable, at least, that the building could be moved to the, to the land. And then when I checked it out, I realized that in, in actual fact that could happen, and made the decision to do it. And so uh, I moved the building, and once I got it there, this location, I started thinking of some uses the building could be put, and ultimately uh, had this little brainstorm, an upscale uh, bed and breakfast or country inn. We named it Chambury, and after the city that the nuns came from, the Sisters of St. Joseph of Chambury, France, and uh, thought it was an appropriate name. Chambury continuously, who uh, could probably stay in any hotel in America or in the world, and uh, have found that the Chamburian offers a certain charm and uh, ambiance that they really love. Library Association was founded in 1874 and was set up in a room in the town hall, in Memorial Hall, and it was the old courtroom building. It outgrew its location and Dr. Hassett applied to Andrew Carnegie back in 1906 for some Carnegie funds to build a new building. Most of the libraries in Massachusetts had been started with Carnegie funds. And I do think that this is one of the most attractive of the Carnegie buildings. It is a fairly large size building for a community of this size, but I think it was well thought out when Henry Moule designed this building. The site selected for the new building was on the location of Peter Wilcox's log cabin. In 1777, it was the site of the first town meeting. One of the interesting architectural features of the building is the carved marble open book that's in the pediment at the front door. It was carved by John Dollar, who was a stone cutter here in Lee. The outside of the building 
was cut from the marble in the Lee Marble Quarry. And when they put the addition on in 1977, they opened the quarry again so the stone outside the building would match the original edifice. When we found out that they were going to tear down the, the, the Bossidy Block house, which was right on Main Street next to the library and the church, uh, we decided that we would go before the selectmen and present a case to them about Jim Burton not having been recognized and to name a park after him, the James Burt Veterans Memorial Park. People stop now and they sit in front of there, or they stand in front of there, or they sit on the benches and they kind of uh, think back, if they're veterans, they think of what's happened in the past, you know, or, and for those that don't know anything about what happened during the war, and there's a lot of them that don't, you know, it kind of gives them an inkling of what might have happened, especially the Jim Burt plaque. It really spells it out pretty much, you know.
Back in the old days, it was all truck drivers and mill hands that came in there. So a three o'clock shift used to used to be 30, 40 guys out here waiting to go to work. They used to call this corner the huddle. Everybody's a huddle back in the 20s. I did it for 46 years. I quit the year 2000, came and I quit. I figured that was a good time to quit. 100 hours a week, work a half a day, 12 hours. <laughs> That's a half a day. This is my whole life. I used to come in here when I was a kid, they used to kick me out. <laughs> so then I bought the place, kicked them out. <laughs> my kids, when they went to school, after school, they came down, peeled potatoes, and cleaned the alleyway, cleaned this, and did things. and. They grew up in the business, and I paid them, but I didn't give them too much because I didn't want to spoil them. You know? And they all, hey, I got seven children, they're all perfect. You know, I can't say nothing wrong about any of them. They really did a good job. And I had my mother-in-law work here, my father-in-law work here. My father, when he retired, he, he came in, he did a lot of work around here. So it was a family affair. People come in, they liked the place just the way it was. It was small. They used to tell me this place is unique, he used to say. We kept it the same, and it was like back in the 50s, 55. And one thing about it, we didn't have to expand, because when people come in here, you sat down in two minutes, you were waiting, on it. and you were in three, four minutes, you were eating. So we got the people in and out fast. And once you come in here, we feed you, we caught you. You know, they, we always got them back. The Lee Town Hall was built in 1873, primarily of brick and marble out of our own Lee quarries. Lee Town Hall has always housed the police station, jails, and emergency dispatch center. And we're one of the few towns in Berkshire County that have our own 911 center. In addition, over the years, we've had movies here, movie theaters. We've had family roller skating up on the third floor. Downstairs has housed many community organizations, such as Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, the U.S. Post Office, the Lee Library, um, a barber shop. John F. Kennedy visited here in 1956, uh, came to a meeting here at Town Hall. The courts of Berkshire County uh, for Southern Berkshire and Central were held here at Town Hall until uh, the early 1980s. And I guess our most famous case would be the Arlo Guthrie case that was um, held here in uh, the late 60s, right after Thanksgiving. And, and it has been made into a very famous movie using the Lee courtroom as its background. I sentence each of you to pay a fine of $25, and you will remove the garbage. Nobi looked at the C&I dog, and then at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, and began to cry. Because Obi came to the realization that it was a typical case of American blind justice, and there wasn't nothing he could do about it. Uh, Memorial Hall is built on the site of the former Hicks Hotel, which burned down, and uh, a group of local businessmen got together and decided they wanted to build a memorial to the soldiers and veterans of the Civil War. In the hallway is a marble plaque listing all the, the veterans that were killed. In 1912, Memorial Hall um, had quite a extensive interior renovations to it. Well, again in 1992, which was 80 years later, we needed extensive renovations, and that's when we put in the elevator and made the whole of Town Hall handicapped accessible, including the jail cells, which were not up to par. Over the last 10 to 15 years, I've seen changes take place in Main Street, which I can only be very happy about. Um, on a summer night, I drive through Main Street. It looks so pretty. We have beautiful gas lights, antique lights, and I see people all over the place walking up and down Main Street, having an ice cream cone, sitting on their benches, um, just relaxing, and I think, wow, look at all these people who come to Lee, you know, just, just because they think it's a nice town. and. Um, I think it's a nice town too, and I think we're very lucky to live here. While I was here in 55, the turnpike came in in 1957, and that changed the whole town. And the, and the turnpike interchange eventually was supposed to be put in 
and Route 7, but the town fathers went down and wanted to interchange in Lee. And that put Lee on the map, because right now we're exit 2 on the, on the interchange. And without that interchange, I think Lee would be, you know, it wouldn't be the booming town it is today. We're not so much of a pass-through as we used to be. Now we're a destination. This is the best town in the world right here. Thank you.